read students' journal, to grade it, to analyze their journal is very time consuming. So the question is, is there any tool or approach we can use to assist the teacher to analyze students' journal writing? Okay, here's the topic modeling comes into play. Topic modeling is a computational approach we can use to extract um, common themes from textual documents. Latent semantic analysis is a one of the approach to build topic modeling, but in recent years, LDA became more and more popular. And uh, a lot of scholars use LDA to, to build topic modeling to help analyze students' essay or to analyze students' online discussion. And uh, they believe that LDA is more accurate and precise to, to extract the things, the topics in the text. And in this research, we're going to use LDA to build topic model to explore pre-service teachers' journals. And particularly, we will answer questions like, what are the key topics mentioned in students' reflection journals? Are these topics within or go beyond the weekly teaching content? Are topic of relevance associated with the journal grades? If yes, can we build a topic-based model to predict students' journal grades? Okay, the study was conducted in a six-week undergraduate level course. And the purpose of this course was to teach the precept teachers how to integrate technology in their teaching and learning. And we have six weeks in total, but in the first five weeks we have instructions on different um, particular uh, certain type of technologies and the last week to six week is only a overview uh, the pre review and student presentation so this study will focus on students journal in the first five weeks and the teacher reads students a very important assignment in this card in this course is students need to write reflections after each class to pick the things they feel important to um, reflect on what they what what they did in the class, and the teacher will um, grade the students' journal into three levels. If students shows a lot of integrated thinking, like they explain and analyze the problems, the concepts of using take a certain type type of technology, or if they analyze the pedagogic idea and the principle or series behind the technology use, or if they connect the new knowledge with the prior knowledge or the personal experience, then we are graded as excellent, the level three. If students do not show that much of high art of thinking, but they do give a comprehensive description of the class and the, the things they learned, then I will, uh, we were graded as um, great, the level two. And the last one, grade one, is if students just give some simple description of some aspect of the class, we will grade it as good. Okay, the data we use in the study is the total of 367 journals from 80 students. And you will see that um, their grades almost evenly distributed across the three levels. And this table summarizes the structure of the data. Um, the distribution of the number of the journal across different weeks and across different semesters. Okay, to build a topic model, a very important and also challenging task is to determine the optimal number of the topic, the K value. And it's in the study, we did two ways to determine this value. The fir first of all, we did a traditional way, we manually run the the model from the number starting from five because they're five weeks to 30. And we read the keywords in each semester and manually label it and to determine based on our prior knowledge and experience in this course, we, we determined, we feel that uh, when K is 10, it is the model um, best reflect what happened in the class. 
And uh, you might say this way might be subject to subjective bias. So we did another way, computational way to use term centric stability to determine the K value. This stability, and the idea behind the stability analysis <coughs> is that when we repeatedly run this model by sampling from the same data, we will get the similar results from with the different models we got. So we still we run the data using this approach from k equals to phi to 30. And also we found that when k is equal to 10, the stability score is the highest, which is consistent with our manually manual analysis. So we determined that the k equals to 10. So we are going to build a 10 cluster topic model. So this is the results. We got 10 um, clusters. And still we read the keywords in each cluster and, to, and then to label each cluster as a topic. We, among the 10 topics, six topics are closely related to the teaching content. And another, addition, another four additional topics which go beyond the teaching content but can well describe what students really care about and interested in. For example, for cluster zero, I labeled as Word, PowerPoint, and Story. This, is, th this topic is uh, closely related to sec uh, second week teaching content. In the second week, we teach our students how to use Microsoft Word and PowerPoint to develop teaching materials as handout, worksheet, or create a storybook. A very important uh, activity in this class, students need to use PowerPoint to create a digital storybook called Pumpkin Story to describe how a pumpkin grow from seed to a large pumpkin. And if you read the keywords, you will find that this, this keywords will reflect what happened, the activities we did in the second week. And this, we also have an excerpt from student's journal. Like in the second class, we learned how to use PowerPoint and Microsoft Word. We read a book about a seed growing and learn how to use the pictures in the story to create our own story by using PowerPoint. So I hope this might give you a better idea of how our topic match to the data. And similarly, we also got another four additional topics like um, age use in the computer. The students might concern about the appropriate age or grade level of using certain kind of te technology. Or like class tonight, instructional strategies. The students might, concern, might care about what kind of pedagogical uh, strategies I can use to, to really facilitate students learning with technology. Okay, um, topic modeling is probability based. It treats each document as a probability distribution across different topics and also treat each topic a probability distribution across a collection of words. And you will see in the table that this um, is the probability, the relevance proportion um, for a document from one document from student journal. And you will see that each topic, the 10 topics, each topic have a rele relevance propor proportion, means how this doc document is re relevant to this topic. And if we put the relevance proportions on the timeline, we will get an idea of how their topics evolve over time. Okay, this is the weekly <coughs> teaching, the topics associated with the weekly teaching content. Um, as you see um, that, um, because it is associated with weekly teaching content, we, so we have a hypothesis that this week, uh, weekly topic will achieve a highest relevance among journals in the corresponding week. For example, if you look at still a topic uh, zero, class 10, uh, class zero, and uh, this one is associated with week two, and you will see that um, the documents closely related with this topic aggregated in the week two area. So very similar, you will see 
for week um, one or week three, week four, week five, the similar phenomenon happens. And for week one, because the first week is the overview of the whole semester, so it will cover a lot of topics. So the first week is slightly higher than other weeks, but uh, it's not a bias. Okay, another additional four topics, um, like computer a and age, instructional strategy, positive sentiment toward assignment and general. This topic is, um, is not that re related with the teaching content. So we assume that these topics will occur more evenly across the course semester. And we will see that the graphs um, confirmed our hypothesis. And to know about students' um, additional, uh, additional topics can give us the indication that um, students maintain their attention and the interest on these topics throughout the semester, no matter what teaching content is taught. This has a very important indication for us instructors as if we want to redesign our activities and our learning content, we might consider taking into account these additional topics. Um, students really interested in, for example, if I want to, in this study, if I want to redesign this course, I might consider to incorporate more activities or content around the topics like um, the appropriate grade levels, age levels of using certain type of technology or around the topics like um, what is the instructional strategy students can use to integrate that technology. We also did other analysis. For example, sentiment analysis to explore the emotional aspect of students' journal. And also we did a correlation analysis to identify the factors that are uh, related with their uh, journal grades. And after we have identified these factors, we use this classification algorithm like Knight Bayes, Decision Tree, and SVM to build a model to predict their journal grades. Okay, if you look at the table on the left, you will see that the weekly content, weekly content topics are significantly related with their grades. Actually, this is not surprising. Um, when students' um, journals are more closely related with their um, the teaching content, it means that um, they are on topic. And we will <laughs> see how students engaged in their reflection. If students only stay at the surface level of writing, they might just say, oh, I'm interested in the second week, I love the second week's class, and I learned a lot. But they would not really touch the concrete activity happened in class. If students are deeply engaged in the class, in the reflection, it is more likely they will give more details and examples of the concrete activities and of what they learned in the class. So, they, the, which will make the, the, so the relevance proportion go, go up. So, um, the, we can use from this association, we can use the, the topic of relevance to tell us how students engaged in the reflection. Other than that, we also found that the word account is closely related with their journal grades. Okay, and then after we identified these two factors, weekly topic content and another one, what, what, what account, then we built a prediction model. We used this three characterism. And uh, we got the accuracy for not if yes and decision tree around 0.65. And uh, this SVM is about, accuracy is about 0.59. And all of the accuracy of the three are all above the baseline, which is 0.33. Okay, if it, and this is the graph from decision tree. We can get an idea of how the model um, decide their general grades. Um, like, the model will first of all look at the work account to, to fill out the um, 
the journal is graded as level one and level two, and then the model will look at the topic relevance to filter out the journal is graded as level two and the journal is graded as level three. Okay. So if we look at, by looking at the accuracy, there's still a long way to go to build a satisfactory prediction model, but the study is still very important. It can suggest that the potential of using topic modeling to identify the things students really care about and really interested in, in the class, from, especially from the perspective of the students rather than from the teacher. And another one is the topic of relevance can tell very important information on the quality of students' reflection. We can tell how students engaged in the reflection. And um, also, the topic modeling can contribute to the construction of the automated grading tool. But in the future, we still need to identify more indicators to help us to improve the ac accuracy of the prediction model.